The following is a fan-based discussion. All materials discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, Saban Entertainment, and Subaraya Productions. Hi, everybody! <laughs> what even was that? Oh, I clapped harder than I meant to. Hi, everybody! Welcome back to another episode of the Tokucast Review. Welcome back. This week, episode 59, we're going back to Ultraman with the technical, well, the most recent completed series. Yes. With Ultraman G. Ultraman g Yes, Ultraman g It's a wonderful, pleasant surprise after watching Orb. This, I, I texted you about this earlier. This is the best thing I've had to watch for Tokugast in a very long time. Yeah. Oh, goodness. We were all there for the Kiva angle on I, th- I think the, la- the last show or movie, whatever, that I watched for this channel that I really, really liked was Ultimate X, and that was back in January. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. thought the show was very, very good. Yes. This one here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off where we usually do with the opening. <laughs> it's not bad. It's a thing. It's not bad. I'm not a fan. Not a fan? No. Uh, the opening... Here, here's, the th- here's the thing about the opening. This show kind of has the Ginga problem. Stuff. Of instead of having insert songs, they just kind of play the theme song yeah. or the fights. Well, that's because Super Raya is just sort of hemorrhaging money right now. Because they're not yeah. really making a lot of their money back. Yeah, unfortunately. But they're giving us, you know, at least a quality content in this case. So, there's that. Let's start off uh, episode one with Welcome to the Secret Base. Mm-hmm. Where we end up meeting Riku, who is our... Our protagonist. Yes. Our, yeah, our protagonist for this show. I, you know, it, it's actually a pretty good introduction. We also it's a good introduction. Pega, who is... His, his little alien friend. Yeah. Who, who, the first time I saw, I was worried. Yeah. Because the way he was dressed, and I didn't hear him speak at first, just just like seeing him in the opening theme song, I was like, are He's they going gonna, to are they, are they do like an Alpha 5 hip Power Rangers kind of thing with this They're going to make him a mascot. That's what I thought. Yeah. But... They didn't do that. Pleasantly. Pleasantly, they didn't do I that. I liked him. I liked him, too. Yeah, but we end up getting to meet Pega and, uh, like, a manager. I think, I think one of the things that helps is the voice. Yeah. They didn't give him an annoying voice. Yeah, they really didn't. Now, the episode is starting off with uh, various Ultra Warriors fighting against Ultraman Belial. Mm-hmm. Belial. And I like the fact that they made Ultraman Hikari, like, the main... It was, it was nice to see him again. And yeah. His chief role was a scientist. Yeah, on uh, on the planet of light. So that was it was nice seeing him again. Yeah, and Ultraman Belial, he comes back to Earth. He's getting ready to blow it up and do all kind. Of, he's get, basically going to destroy the entire universe. And Ultraman, Ultraman King shows up. It was great seeing him again. Ultraman King shows up, and you know how in Pat in past shows the Ultraman finds a host and fuses with them to save them. Ultraman King fused with the entire universe. Just powerful. Just wrap powerful. your head around that for yeah. a second. He fused with everything. And he literally carried, everything. And he carries them making the ultra capsules mm-hmm. uh, that are that can contain like an ultra warrior's power. An ultra's powers. Uh, Belial ends up uh, summoning this super dimensional eradication bomb, which sets the Earth into an explosion effect mm-hmm. and consumes the entire universe into a black hole. Yep. And then Zero tries to help, but is stopped by his dad uh, due to his injuries and the fact that the universe is just beyond saving at this point. Mm-hmm. That's what ended up causing uh, Ultraman King. That's when King. the Ultraman King shows up yeah. and saves the day. Literally yeah. Saves everything. Now, I love the fact that they made this, like, it has a lasting impact. And that's the basis of this show, because this show is more or less another of, in the Showa universe of M76. Mm-hmm. That's what basically all of this is taken uh, care of. And everybody on Earth remembers what Belial did. They remember what he looks like. Yes. And that ends up being the basis for this show. And I love that. <laughs> it's just like he really has to prove him because when Jeed first transforms, everyone looks at him and it's like, uh, they look at the eyes and they're like, I know what that is and I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Riku and Pega. You know, they end up having the manager that they end up staying with, but yep. they end up having to leave, they end up going to... Because of, because of giant monster attacks. Yeah. Because uh, for the first time in... Because uh, I think Orb had this too, but there is no force on... There's a force on Earth to deal with aliens. We have the AIB. But as far as giant monsters, 
They have not been seen on Earth in who knows how long, so yeah. humanity is not properly equipped to deal with them. Yeah. So that's where Ultraman comes in, and I like that. Yeah. And uh, they end up going to the Nebula House, which is their base, and they end up meeting a uh, Rem. Rem, who is the AI who is in <laughs> charge of the whole thing. Yeah. And a strange man in black ends up, we end up seeing him. And he's the one who's basically controlling this monster. Yep. And remnants of giving Rico after they get in there the riser, which gives him the ability to transform into Ultraman G. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about we've talked about this suit before. It's it's good. It's a like once again, I don't like that face. He actually has an, a regular ultra form that he can't access. Yeah. I figured as much. And his regular ultra form actually looks like Belial's prior to him becoming Belial. Mm-hmm. And Jean himself, one, I, like I said, I don't like his face, but I love the rest of the costume because it's very Belial esque, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's his dad. That's his dad, as, so, we come, as we come to find out. Yeah, he looked like his daddy. So, <laughs> I mean, it makes completely another sense. And I love the people's reaction to seeing him. Mm-hmm. They are so afraid of him because he looks just like his dad. Yep. And they don't know exactly what he's there for. So they think, like, they react just terribly to him mm-hmm. in the first couple episodes, which makes complete sense. People remember what happened. Yeah. So I'm just like, that's a good way to I remember the, the time, the last time something like you was here and they tried to murder everything. Yeah. I like not being murdered or the universe being destroyed, but me being murdered is way above that. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's interesting just to see, you know, that reaction to everything with this. Uh, Jean has a time limit, three minutes. They don't end up doing so much with that, and they said, uh, he can't transform for 20 hours after those three minutes are up. Mm. His body can't really handle that. Yep. And the two Ultra Capsules that he uses first are Base Ultra The original Ultraman. And, and Belio. Yeah. I love how they set that up. Because it's just like, this is the ultimate good guy mm-hmm. and the ultimate bad guy in this universe. Yep. It's great. This is a very good first episode. It's a very good start. Once again, the coming off of Orb Origins, where the action was just very bad, monster designs weren't as good as they had been. The production quality in this seems to be off the charts. The production quality in this is insane. I, once again, Tsuburaya Productions and their managers... Are great, u- great use of miniatures, great use of debris. Yeah. Once again, when he hits the ground and like a mountain of debris comes up, you really cars start what? falling. There's there's this one shot in one of the later episodes where he Ultraman lands on his back and a bunch of cars fly up and you hear the little alarms going off. And in you the see background. the lights going off. You see the lights going off and they're breaking off and like like the bumpers are breaking off in a realistic manner. It's great. Yeah. Ah, it's so good. Speaking of, uh, you know, the Earth's reaction to Belial and Gein, in this case, in episode two, it's just like, Riku doesn't know if he wants to use these new powers. Yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah, because <laughs> he's just like, the hell is this? <laughs> Why is everybody scared I was, of me? He, um, was, he was just a regular kid, a few, you know, yesterday, living above a convenience store. Now a convenience store is gone. Yeah. And in episode and two... I'm an Ultraman. <laughs> we also end up getting to meet a... Woman with a sword. Yes, with a Chinese straight sword. This is my Laiha, Laiha Toba. This is my favorite character in this show. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> she, she's my favorite character in this show. She is Laiha Toba, Monster Hunter. Yeah, and I like the fact they actually utilize a lot more of these smaller monsters in this season. Mm. With AIB, you know, having... Mon- well, I the guess a- alien. the aliens. Yeah, the alien uh, agents and, you know, have like bounty hunters and mercenaries. And there's one case where you're getting to see a sniper. It, they're all aliens, but it's just like there is a difference between, you know, the There's a difference between the kaiju that Ultraman has to fight. Because when she said mo- she's a monster hunter, I, I immediately thought of the kaiju and it yeah. was like, um, How? I'm sure you're good with that sword, but no. <laughs> And then I find out, oh, she's going after the smaller ones. All right, that makes more sense. Yeah. And there are these people who have, like, little stars inside of them. That's how... The the way... Because <coughs> previously it was cards, right, for Orb. And in this one, there are, you know, things... These energies called little stars. 
and people manifest them inside themselves, and if they willingly part with them, they can give them to Ultraman, and that's how he gets his new capsules. And the aliens and monsters in this case, in some cases, are actually going after these little stars. Yes, that's because the monsters are all drawn to them. Yeah, and these little stars are basically collections of Ultraman King's energy housed inside these people. Yes. Found that out later, but it makes sense for... He, the show is very good at revealing <coughs> plots as it goes along. Yeah. It doesn't just vomit all the exposition at you at once. It reveals things gradually, which is nice. Yeah. It knows and how to space itself out. We get to see Laiha fight quite a bit we in do. the first episode because she's fighting, you know, a couple of aliens mm-hmm. that are like, you know, the bad guys for this episode. And it is a joy watching her fight. <laughs> she's a... She's this actress, uh, Chihiro Yamamoto. Uh, Yamamoto is her name. She's very, very good. She was in at stunt work and fighting and all this stuff. She's she was, a very good actress too. She was in Nin Ninja. She was like the only good thing about the show. <laughs> she was only in one episode. Uh, you know, she was in Ninja. Costume. She was in. Uh, she was in the Heisei Generation the movie, which she was great in that movie. She didn't have a lot of lines, mm-hmm. but she fought Haruto and Shinosuke oh, by oh, herself. Damn. So. <laughs> Uh, and she did that, like, untransformed. I was hooked on her from day one. I'm just like, yes. And in this show, she, you know, she doesn't have a monster form. It's just her. Yeah. She's just really, really good. Yeah. There's an episode later when uh, somebody's firing lasers at her, and she's just swinging her sword, just, like, blocking them out. I'm saying, like, nope, 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 nope. you can't be this badass. <laughs> oh, yes, she can. You're banned. <laughs> <laughs> You're You're banned. <laughs> And Gide, uh, of course, there's another monster. He ends up having to go out and fight it. I like how his, and we end up seeing this later once Blah actually ends up coming back. Um, his fighting style is a combination of Belial's and Ultraman. Yeah. But it's skewed toward But it's skewed toward, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that they actually kept that up. And that's the thing that we end up seeing from the various forms that he ends up getting. He ends up getting his first, um, the little star is coming into one of the capsules. Yep. And it, it's great. <laughs> like, the first couple of episodes of this show really ended up setting the tone pretty well. They set the tone pretty well, um, but the, the tone, I think, it changes appropriately over on, overall, especially towards the end of the show. Yeah. So that was used well. Uh, episode three, uh, Ultraman I was One of the things I was worried about is if it is... Is this going to be every episode? Is every episode going to be he gets a little star, blah, 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 I thought that's Is it. it going to be victim of the week heavy? But no, it isn't. Yeah. It is for the first couple episodes because he has to get a new form, but then it gradually shifts away from that. Yeah. Episode three, Ultraman Zero reaches Earth mm-hmm. with the last amount of power of the uh, ultimate. It was good to see him again. Yeah. In a good way this time. In a very good way Unlike this time. Unlike the last time that we saw him. Where he was in the worst movie ever. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, I think we're going to, like, our next Ultraman thing, we're just going to do a couple of movies. Sounds good to me. Yeah, just get some of the movies out of the way. But the ultimate bracelet finally ended up failing, so he has to actually bond with somebody. On- and he bonds with one of my favorite characters in the show, Lito Igaguri. Yeah, and he's great. Oh my god, the, the way in which he chooses Leto as the host is, like, the greatest thing ever, because... You know how in previous shows when he chooses a host, uh, like, you take Ikari, for example, his host died, you know, saving the earth. Mirai sacrificed himself. These people that did, her- they died heroically, doing heroic things. He shows up to Leto in the hospital and he's like, you tried. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. You, um, dude, you, you tried to save the kid from the debris. The kid wound up being okay regardless of you getting hit by a truck as a result of slipping on a banana peel. You tried. I'm going to choose you as my host. Yeah. You're good. You're good. You're a good guy. And he also ends up being chased by the Dark Pop Zero, mm-hmm. which are basically evil robot version of Zero. Of Zero, Zero yeah. And Zero ends up fighting them off, but he doesn't end up beating all of them because, like, three are left over. He tries to go out and fight them. Yeah. Gets they're, his too, they're too strong. And he gets another little star in this case, and he transforms into Geet's solid burning. I love this suit so much. It's a great suit. <laughs> this suit is so awesome. Not just, not only does it look amazing, but the way the steam shoots out of it whenever he's punching or moving, I was just like, that is such a cool effect. And they do some amazing camera work in this yes. episode. Like, he transforms into it, he like gets the, uh, the slugger on his leg. Yeah. And you follow it through one of the dark clouds, and I'm just like, that's unfair. 
<laughs> You're banned. <laughs> You're banned. <laughs> This show, oh, <laughs> this show, like this one, really ended up standing out to me. And I watched the like I started watching it when it first was actually on, and I stopped and I finished it before the uh, this review. But I remember this one especially because it's just like seeing that fight scene. Yeah, was shot beautifully. Oh yes, I'm just like do this for every <laughs> like Lupe got there. Thank God, built it. So I'm just like <laughs> CEO comes through. <laughs> that's all. That's all I want. Please do. But it's just like seeing that fight, and ah, oh, <laughs> it was such like I went back and watched this, this just those scenes yes. because it's so worth it. Absolutely, <laughs> it's such a great episode because of the fight scene and, and seeing Zero come back. Seeing Zero come back, and I love the fact that he's kept to the sidelines for the most part early on in his appearance. Yeah. Because he's too weak, he's too weak, he can't trans, uh, Leto can't transform into him yet. And he doesn't trust G. Yeah. Which makes sense. It Does looks make sense. like his arch enemy. So. <laughs> I mean. So again, it makes sense. Uh, another, one of the things I love about Leto, getting back to him, I love the fact that he's a family man. Yeah. I, lo- I love his family. The actress that got to play his daughter is adorable. She was, I thought she was. And she never, I was worried because child actors in Toku, they, they can be very annoying. I thought his daughter was adorable and his wife was such a good actress. Yeah. I loved her in the show. Those, like the next couple of episodes are basically just him getting little stars and meeting people. Yep. Actually going and showing that he's a good guy. In mm-hmm. uh, the next uh, form that we end up getting to see is Acro Smasher. This is how you do Victim of the Week right. You're actually building to something. Yeah. It's he's he has to get new powers because the threats are the threats are escalating and we see that in the fights and also this is how he's getting people to come around and trust him he's beating yeah. up monsters he's showing he's he's the good guy yeah and you know he really is showing he's a good guy in episode five when he ends up becoming Acro Smasher mm-hmm. which is a combination of Hikari and Cosmo Solid yes. Burning is a combination of Ultra Seven and Ultra Man Leo yes but yeah Cosmos is the guy who wants to give you a hug. Yes. That's his plan. So, <laughs> this, uh, What do you think of this one, this suit? I like it because it's a little bit more I, streamlined. I, I love Blue Ultras. I love, yeah. I love when they use Blue Ultras. This suit, I it looks good in screenshots, but in motion from certain angles, he's it, very, doesn't, it doesn't look that good. It's very Tai Chi. Heavy, it is very, makes it, sense. Yeah, it is very Tai Chi. This is more the ninja one. It's This yeah. is the speed one. It's Tai Chi and quick strikes. Yeah. And, you know, making the monster go away. And yes. Positive energy. I honestly like it because it makes the head look better. The head the head works because it looks like it's designed It has for, the fins. Yeah, it has the fins to allow for better uh, airflow over the head. And, you know, bringing Ultraman Hikari into this outfit. Which is always nice. Yeah. It's always I, good to see. I think this one is just a good one. Mm-hmm. It's, that, it's like, good. It's no solid burning, but it's good. I think it's also because of the pattern. I like the pattern. The pattern is nice, but from some angles, it just doesn't look as good. Yeah. But it's good to just see him do things. Mm-hmm. I like seeing things like that. Um, episode 6, we end up getting a new toy with the Geek Claw, which really kind of co- kind of comes out of nowhere. He just sort of <laughs> decides it. to use it. Yeah. It, it, it's okay. It's 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 a nitpick. Yeah, it's, a, it's also not very good. It's not a good weapon. No, it has the uh, uh, yellow racer problem of there's nothing actually holding yeah. his hand there. It's just kind of like flopping around. It would just kind of flop around if you were to actually use it. There's no grips. Yeah, or at least nothing to hold his hand in place. Now the main bad guy for the first portion of this, yes, uh, K. Fukuide, who is K. Alien K. Sturm. Alien Sturm. Yeah, Sturm. That sounds something extremely German. Or... It is. It means storm. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but he's this basically... This has been Foreign Language <laughs> Lessons from Cast. I was like, oh. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Join us next time, won't you? I'm going to put a picture of a storm over my face. The picture was going inside my head right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he's the main bad guy. He's an author. Yes, he's a famous science fiction author. Yes. But he is the main bad guy of this. I like uh, him a lot. Once we end up getting into the comparisons, I mean, well, you know, 
the characters at the end, I am yeah. going to have one for him, if only because there's an obvious comparison to me. Mm. So, you you know who I mean. I probably I probably don't know now, but I will. As soon, yeah. as, as, soon as you mention it, I'm going to be like, oh. Yeah, he's the main bad guy in this, and he has like a direct connection to Belial, who's stuck in like another universe. Yes. But he can't get out, because the bad guy has to wait before he can come here. Mm. Um, episodes 7 and 8 are the two episodes that end up leading into Zero's new form. Yes. And it's great to see... Sacrifice and beyond the destiny. Yes, and it's great to see Zero really interact with Leto throughout this show. This actor, I want to give him all the props in the world. He's because great. Whenever his glasses are on, he's Leto, but oh, oh, uh, Zero has the ability to take over his body. So when he'll that just, happens, he he'll just whip the glasses off. off and then he'll, his voice will change. And it's like, ah, that's good. I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. Plus, he's also a, like a good hand-to-hand fighter. Yeah. That's something that we end up seeing much more later on. Mm-hmm. For obvious reasons, because we're going to have smaller aliens. But I like seeing... This show does a lot of hand-to-hand fighting. There is a lot of hand-to-hand fighting. And I enjoy it. Even, even in the ultra scenes, it's a lot of... A lot of just raw punching. There's not a lot of weapons involved. When, like, especially coming off of Orb, because I didn't really notice this as much in Orb. I mean, there were some cases, like, when you first get the uh, Thunder Breast of Form, mm-hmm. uh, that he is a second that plane out of the sky. Yeah. But, like, they do that thing that we saw a lot more in Mebius and X. Mebius and X, where there's, where there's actual armaments yeah. that they get. It's armaments. And, and they were great for those shows, but in this, it was nice to have a change. Like, when they're far away, the strikes are slower. Mm-hmm. When they're close up, they're really fast. Yeah. Not the world of normal speed. Yeah. It's, that's something I didn't really notice in Orb. I definitely didn't notice in Norb Origin. Mm-hmm. But uh, it happens a lot more here. But in episode 7 and 8, it's like, Zero almost is getting killed. Yep. And at the end... He's still, he's still not quite at full strength yet. Yeah. But in episode 8, we end up getting Zero Beyond. Zero Beyond. I actually really like this suit. I was a much bigger fan of this one. Especially from the last time that we saw him. With a lot of silver on this one. A lot of silver. A lot of silver, but a uh, n- nice use of blue. And there's the, a problem. the helmet, I like. There's a problem. What is that? That turns amazing to see this. Okay, you want to know a funny story? One complaint I do have about this show as a whole is transformation sequences take way too long. You go. I go. Here we go. Now, that does end up getting a great moment later on. Yes. I'll give it that, and I think yeah. you know what you're doing. <laughs> but, yeah. It's like, for the first couple of times, I'm just like, I'm falling asleep. It's, it's not Jakku bad. Oh. It's it's nowhere near as bad as that. The but monster's left, and everybody's dead by the time Jackie gets there. This isn't anywhere near that bad, but it's kind of like, okay, th- th- there's a couple episodes later where they do just immediately transform, yeah. and that was nice. But, okay, this Here's one... Sequence this sequence the first time, first couple times that we see Zero Beyond. Yeah. Is the first time in particular, because he has uh, the capsules of Ginga, Victory, X, and Orb. Mm-hmm. He combines... The new generation Ultra Warriors. Yeah, the new the new generation Ultra Warriors. He has to combine two of that. This is the first time he does this. Oh, God, yeah. Combines the two of them together, then combines the other two together, then Henshin's again, and it it takes so long. But here's the thing that really drove me nuts about it. I, I watch these shows on Crunchyroll. Me too. And Crunchyroll does this thing on the PS4 app sometimes where it likes to glitch out. And rewind time a couple seconds. <laughs> it did it so many times during this episode, during this scene. It must have taken 15 minutes for him to transform. And it got to the point where it was like, wait, was that a glitch or is it really just taking this long? I'm not kidding when it, when I say it almost took four minutes for this first transformation. Mm. But it's thankfully, he low. never has to do that again. Yeah, after Loa, he just ends up having the two capsules. After, that's it. Well, that's that's immediately after this. He just yeah. gets the two capsules. And he doesn't have to do the full seven, eight yeah. billion of the But man. it is long. Mm. But let's go ahead. As you said, because start off with the suit. I just had to get to the transformation sequence to get that out of the way. The suit. <laughs> a lot of silver. Lot I of love silver. the fact that purple's the accent. Mm-hmm. That's... Great. I love no, purple as a color. The blue of the, uh, the gems yeah. that's around his body. That's purple as a color is a great accent. Mm-hmm. And I love how badass he gets a few times in this form. Because he has four sluggers on his head. Yeah. And he likes to just block stuff and create shields and attack people and yep. create a big one. And I'm just like, later, yeah. 
That's how you utilize a new form. Yes. And this form is very powerful, and he uses it a lot. It's not like, he'll go to the Ultraman Zero one first, because as, as we said, he can't really hold this form for that long. That's just, yeah. you know, him not having his brace anymore, so he can't be at full power at all times. Right. But I still like this, these two episodes, because it really shows Leto's connection with, with his family. He's so afraid to leave them behind, but he's just like, if I don't go out there and fight, they won't have a future, so it won't matter. Right. And I'm just like, family man. Mm-hmm. Make a show about him. Just him. No ultras, just him. <laughs> I'd watch it. I would too. It's great. It's a great episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on to the next one. The Sword of an Oath. I don't know why I said it like that. But this is also like the first time that we end up getting to see Laiha and uh, K. K fight each other. And she bears a particular grudge against him. Because she was, like, I believe the first person on Earth to have a little star, but she didn't fully embrace it, and she, uh, Kay sent out a monster to attack her, mm-hmm. and it killed her parents. Yep. They were and, out hiking in the mountains. And, yeah. Uh, she survived. She survived. But. And then she dedicated her life to destroying yeah. him. And the AIB, who's always been sort of in the background, we end up having two that we end up seeing more often than not. And that's uh, Moa, who is a childhood friend of Riku's. Yep. And uh, Shadow... She ain't shy about letting us know that. No. She's she's fine, though. Like, I, I was not a fan of her. She, like, I... When I'm getting characters like this, I always end up putting them up against uh, Yugi from Forza. Hmm. That's my terrible meter. That's your terrible meter? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I was at the bottom of it, because mm. I love her. And then we end up getting into Yuki, and I'm just like, you have your moments, but get away. Y- Yuki definitely has her moments. I think Moa has... I didn't. I don't think I ever truly hated this character. Yeah. I just disliked her less by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I disliked her less? Because I thought I thought she got better toward... She had some moments toward the end of the show that I thought were pretty solid. Yeah. But I was not a fan of... The actress was kind of annoying. She's constantly pouting. Like, every time you see her, she has, like, big pouty lips. And I was like, okay, can you not pout? There's no reason for that right now. And she has a raging brother boner. She does. Like, to the, she to the, to the, to the point where it's just, like, uncomfortable. Um, and there's another she, one. She is not shy about letting the fe- letting us the, us, the audience, and also the characters in the show know... That she grew up with Riku and that they used to take baths. And I'm pretty sure she wants to do it again because she never shuts the hell up about it. But the, uh, her, I guess, sort of mentor? Her uh, her partner. Yeah. On the AMB, Shadow Zeta. Who I'm, is another did alien. Did it bother you that in his human form he never opened his mouth? He did it every, every once in a while. But his uh, his species communicates so at will. So I think he just stuck to that. And I'm just like, okay, I, I got over it. And honestly, I like watching him fight too. <laughs> his, act, his actor is a very good actor. Uh, yeah. Good, 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 this as well. Uh, so many out of suits fighting this series. Yeah. It's unfairly good. <laughs> like, I, I stuck with this series because I like the Ultra, but I really stuck with it because just the amount of out of suit fighting that we really mm-hmm. can see. And from people who are skilled at it. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. Like yeah, you this can, is this is more Garo season one and two, less Garo Red Requiem. Yeah, it, it's just something good about it. Mm-hmm. Duh. Episode ten, we end up uh, seeing that um, Moa ends up learning Riku's Re- identity as Ultra Ninja. Yeah, which is fine. You know, it's not I something didn't that like they. This episode. It. I don't like it either, but I like the fact that we. <laughs> this don't. is the one episode that I was just like, Ugh. well, there were probably two, but this one in particular was like that alien. Yeah. That telepathic alien. Like, she can read minds, and she's just a total jerk about it. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> but I, I like the fact that Zena's there mostly just to keep her in line. Mm. And I think he actually sort of does a good job of that. Mm. Um, episode 10. That was 10. Oh, episode 11. 11. G, the, 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 the. Yeah. <laughs> the G-I-D-D. Yeah. Or G-I-D-D. That's the joke. Um, That's not a very good joke. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, but 
G ends up fighting. Good episode, though. He mm-hmm. ends up, uh, like, confronting K. Mm-hmm. K's an asshole. And I like the fact that it's this episode where they, they're, like, outside. La has behind mm-hmm. him. She wants to attack K so bad. And there's a sniper up there. And I like the fact that they utilize Pega. Because Pega's ability is he can go into shadows. Mm-hmm. I wish they would have utilized this more in the show. But I like the fact that they did it here because he's the one who ends up distracting the sniper. And he gets Laiha up there. Mm-hmm. And she ends up going to fight the sniper by herself. Like a badass that she is, <laughs> she wins. Yeah. And there's a scene where uh, Jeet is fighting the monster in the background. And Laiha and the sniper are on the building. Mm-hmm. And they're like fighting in front of each other. I love it. Mm-hmm. Once again, this show and its camera work. <laughs> Uh, but speaking of Kay, I want to I want to jump back for a second to episode seven and mm. talk about one of my favorite moments in the show, which is the lecture. Oh yeah, so suspenseful and so great. Where because Kay knows that Leto is Zero's host, he invites him on stage at one of his lectures and is subtly using his uh, literary techniques as a way to threaten him and say, "I'm going to kill your family. <laughs> <laughs> You're all dead." <laughs> and it was just. Just, just a wonderful, wonderful scene. Yeah. I just want to give special mention to that. It's good. <laughs> There's so many good things in this show. Yes. Um, Rachel's daughter ends up having a little star inside of her. She ends up yep. giving that to Mayu. To Geed, and that ends up turning into the Ultraman Zero capsule, which yep. makes sense. Yep. <laughs> and then in the next episode, we end up getting one for the father of Ultra. Oh, yes. And we get a Magnificent. New form. Yes, Magnificent. This form... I like it a lot. I love I like to call this form, no. <laughs> because that's his response to everything that the enemy does when he has it. Nope, 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 nope. I wish I would have done more with this form, though. And you know why, because not too long after this, he gets his final end show. Here's the, th- here's the thing. I had some problems with the episode, I think it was following this, where he does it. Why don't you just immediately turn into this? Because it's so much stronger. I feel like you could just smoke this guy. Yeah. But I really like this form. I love how it's introduced. It's and huge. It's, it's pretty big. It's a bulky form. It's pretty big, but considering how powerful it is, I think it works. Yeah. Uh, the horns and the pauldrons and yeah. uh, also the gauntlets, I think, do a nice, like, upward... Uh, I think my thing was, good. I didn't like the black under the shoulder, under the pauldron. I think that's what just made it too bulky for me. Like, I like this form, mm. but I don't know. It's just like that black under the pole. Yeah, I see. Because it, it also goes, it goes down the arm yeah. too, through his hands as well. Like, it would have been fine if it was... I think if, it, if the shoulders were slow. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's just too big, so it I, makes the suit actor seem like he can't raise his arms up but so high. Yeah. He's like, I'm doing some chicken wing dance over here, but you get my point. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't stop him from... Kicking everyone's ass. I also like the fact that, especially nowadays, we're getting a lot more for Father Ultra. Yeah. It's just good to see it him. It was great. It's great seeing him again. We saw him in that, like, the best episode of X. So. <laughs> there were a lot of best episodes of X. True. The X was such a good show. God damn found footage episode. <laughs> such a good one. But back to Geek. Um, mm. Yeah, we ended up getting that form. Episode 13 starts off with. Getting us introduced to a character who has no Zawa Zawa. This is freaking Jan from Geki Ranger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, which, ironically, G came out in the 10th uh, the tenth anniversary yeah. of Geki Ranger. Oh, did it. But, unfortunately, there was no, you know, uh, 10 years after special because Ran had yeah. retired. Uh, so We're talking about episode 14, right? 13 and 14. Right. Yeah. 13 is the recap episode. Is it? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, 14 and 15. Yes, that's 14 and 15. That, that was Jen? Yeah, that's, that's a, Jen. Oh, was it? There's no Zawa Zawa. That's probably why I didn't recognize him. That and his hair is a different color. Yeah. His hair is black now. But he's like... A, I love the fact that Zero knows a lot about space. Of course, he lives out there. Yes. But we end up getting some things about... You know, these are the things about this particular race. Mm-hmm. Like the shadow race that Zena is also a part of is basically just a group of bounty hunters. And they're not all nice people. Zane is a good one. But as you can see, he's very standoffish. And that's much more of a personality thing. Uh, Jan, I'm going to keep calling him Jan. 
forgive me, but <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, it's just like uh, Jan ends up coming to the main. Zian is his name. Yeah, and Zena is basically captured in this one, but Moa thinks that he has gone off on some secret mission that she didn't know about, and you know, Zero ends up telling telling all of them that this alien species, you know, they're not always so trustworthy, mm-hmm. which doesn't lead to some trust issues in this episode because she thinks that he doesn't trust her enough to tell her tell uh, her where he's going or what mission that he's on. Mm-hmm. So this guy is coming in to take his place, and she didn't hear anything about that, but, you know, with the trust that she was going on in this episode, it makes complete and utter sense. Yep. And he smiles a lot and is very expressive, but we end up seeing that Seems Zaynab, like a nice guy. Yeah, Zayna was captured by him to bring back this monster that was uh, under water somewhere. Mm-hmm. And he's capturing, he has these two construction guys uh, watching over him, but Zayna ends up beating them and ends up uh, leaving the next episode. He runs in and Jan's on this side, Zayna's on the other. And he's telling her, he's like, don't trust that smile. That's something that he had to be trained to do mm-hmm. because they're not really expressive. As you can see in their alien form, they're just like a blank slate, more or less. And he already, he, he was trying to hack into the system at the AIB and bring in, well, see exactly where this, the monster was. He found it, ends up bringing it out. And I, once again, there's a continuity thing here that I just love because they use what they found in this episode later on. This monster, when it interacts with Jeeves, uh, you know, his beam, mm-hmm. ends up creating a portal in the sky yep. that can basically just end up sucking anybody in, in there yep. you know, out. And Zero ends up having to help defeat him. Yeah. It, it was so interesting seeing Jan not being Jan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, these are good two episodes. In retrospect, I can give you that. But these two episodes, they were okay. I, like I thought these two were okay. It is just because of the fact that, you know, it's one is Jan. But two, I like Moa's just, like, sort of growth in this episode. Mm-hmm. And having to deal with, you know, prejudice in some cases. It's about, to be fair, it doesn't determine that to be true here. But it's just like things like that are done well. Mm-hmm. And I didn't mind it. Um, episode 16, the first day of the end of the world. Laia is once again in possession of a little star. However, an alien does end up uh, trying to kidnap her and all the other little star carriers, but Geed appears to protect them. Mm-hmm. And Belial returns to Earth. There's this scene where they're in the place where the rest of the little stars are that they have actually found that they haven't yeah. given the things over to. And Laiha is having to go in there. The alien tries to come in. He's taking over the body of the scientist. Yep. And she beats the hell out of him. With no sword, by the way. Yeah. I her like legit hand to hand fights are so fast. Yeah. And so good. She's she's really good. Yeah. Ah. Oh, ah. Best girl. <laughs> Episode 17, The King's Miracle, Time to yes. Change Fate. Uh, Fukiri uh, K was defeated. Yes. And those... those uh, but uh, Belio has returned. Yeah. In it, a very big, monstrous form. Yeah, Chimera Barrows. With, with, with kind of with thunder thighs that are making Heisei Godzilla go, Jesus I Christ. know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And with wings on his back. Yep. And he ends up trying... Kind of, it's kind of like a combination of Heisei Godzilla, Belial, and just... And Destoroyah. Yeah. He ends up trying to uh, basically absorb G. Which he does. Yeah. And I remember watching that and I was like, oh, Marcus isn't going to like that because yeah. I know how you feel about absorption. You hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hate it so much. But, and then he flies off to the moon. But, uh... And they have just, ended up trying to come up with a plan to stop yes. him. Uh, doesn't work. But G ends up getting out. And he ends up getting the last couple of little he, stars that he needs. He gets the last couple stars, and then he gets his final form. In shell, at least. Uh, Royal Mega Master. Yes, which is which a combination. Is Belial and Ultraman King. Yes. Once again, purple is that base color. Uh, with the silver as the accent and black and gold. I, I really like this suit. I really like the weapon he gets, too. He also doesn't do, when he transforms into this form, he doesn't do Jeed. No, he does. No, he doesn't. He He's does. just like, ha! And that's it. No, he does. He doesn't actually... In later episodes, he does. I I know what you're thinking of, but it doesn't happen in this case. He just ends up transforming into this one. He doesn't do the gene thing. He just goes, ha, and that's it. Good. Also, at this point, I think there was like a weird little break in between uh, episodes, which is why we got the recap one. Mm. Um, and well, they normally me, have those. He has a different haircut. Oh, does he? Yeah, it was, I noticed that, I and noticed. I was like, it's so weird for me to notice, but okay. I did not 
I noticed that. I like this one. It's a good one, yes. Yeah. It's very good. I think the thing that ends up bringing it together is the fact that the head part protrudes. It actually looks like a crown. Yeah. It's just a good one. And I like seeing him fight in this form. When I love seeing him fight in the form. It's got a lot of... He's got, like, finishers of all the other... Ultras. Of the seven Ultra Brothers. Yeah. Which is it's the, the, which are like the basis of most of his powers in this yeah. form. He gets like all their finishers. He can do all of them at once because f you. It's a good couple episodes. It is, uh, but and again, I really like the weapon. He has a legit sword. Yeah, it's a rapier. It's a it's a legit sword this time. It's a rapier, and normally we just get a dagger. Yeah, a dagger of sorts, but this time it's a full on sword. So it's nice to see Ultraman with a sword. Yeah. Uh, now episode eighteen. Uh, an amnesic K. Fuku, uh, Fukuide is assaulted by an alien who was in possession of a customized stolen legionoid. Yes. Uh, and K. regains his memories and resumes his plans of serving his master, Belial. Yeah. And there's also this uh, woman yep. who Ishikari. is like obsessed with him. I was like, why did they always do this for Sarah Colors? But okay. Um... There's, there's that one lady who's yep. like, uh, I you know you're a murderer, but I Why? like you because you're hot. My panties. <laughs> That's basically her. I'm just like, you're gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I... It was interesting to see her just like basically just protect him. Yes. And he gets his memories back and ends up trying to... Basically, that's it. He is going yeah. back on his thing. One of my back. problems with episodes uh, 16 and 17 was it felt like that was the end of the yeah. show. It was like, well, okay, you beat Belial, didn't you? Where else can you possibly go from here? Yeah. But then the show continued to go on, and I was like, oh, that's where you can go from here. In episode 19, we actually end up getting more from Rem, the AI. The AI. In the base. She gets an android body because Kay decides to come to their... Maybe the house and wreck the place and take it over. Yeah, it I swear I had a problem with the premise of this episode because he legitimately just walks in. Yeah, he does. And I'm just like, Laiha could have beaten the shit out of them. He was injured. And they just run. And then he ends up taking over the house. Uh, ends up creating this monster that would basically end up taking Rem in. Rem has put her Mecha body... Gamora. Yeah, Rem has put her body into like... I guess a robot. It's an android. It's an android. Yeah. Uh, she ends up getting taken over for a little bit by uh, Kay. I like that the android was played by her voice actress. Yes, I noticed that. That was nice. I was like, yay. The same thing happened to Cure Uger, like when uh, Torian yeah. got it, became human and it was played by his voice actress. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, the scene after she ends up going into Mecha Gamora, there's like the internal scene of her original yep. programming yep. and what she's learned being with Riku and Laiha and Pekka mm-hmm. and uh, you know, everybody else. And I like the fact that she ends up beating her original programming, ends up just taking herself out of that. Mm-hmm. Tells Geed how to defeat Mecha Gamora, ends up taking over the defenses of Never the House back, kicks K out. Yep. And that's basically Because it. she has those little drones that shoot yeah. lasers. And then she ends up putting up a barrier, uh, well, putting a system in effect that he can't come in anymore. Yeah. Which she didn't think about originally. Which sort of changes the locks. Yeah. That's really exactly what happens. Mm-hmm. Episode 20. I love this episode so much. The 10 a.m. Monster Bird. Tell me what you liked about this episode. The fact that it was Ultraman Groundhog Day. Yeah. Yeah. And it was executed very well. I love how in the open, the opening, we open in media res, Ultraman kills the monster, and we hard cut to some people watching this uh, on a Teletron somewhere, and they're watching it so passively, and they're just like, Ultraman beats the monster, and they're just like, and they walk away. <laughs> this is the fifth day in a row. And then we find happened. out this is the fifth day in a row it's happened. And so this episode is really about uh, Rachel's wife mm-hmm. and Mayu. Mm-hmm. It's really just, it's focused around them. Yeah. And yeah, I like it. Lumina is his wife. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. These, this episode was, like you said, it's really a Groundhog Day, so it's just a fun episode. It is, it is a fun episode. And, you know, it, it shows how smart they had to be because they had to figure out how to stop this monster from constantly coming back. Yep. Whenever he was blown up, uh, like, the solids would evaporate, congeal would, back into himself. And then he would reform in the atmosphere. So yeah. what they had to do is they had to get everyone in the city to go around and collect as much of him as they could before he evaporated. And then they would freeze him and, like, ship him off to 
different corners of the galaxy to put him in storage containers so he can never reform again. Or at least not back on the planet. They do end yeah. up giving this thing where uh, I like these little tidbits to give about the planets because the planet that originally this monster is from, is from um, its temperature is much lower. Mm-hmm. So that's why when he breaks apart on Earth, it evaporates really quickly and reforms him every day at the same time. Yep. It's a good episode. It, it's a lot of fun. I didn't expect this episode to be as good as it was, but I was sitting over here and it's like, I enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. This this is a good time. <laughs> Alright. Um, episode... 21. 20, uh, Can we skip this one? Yeah. Yeah, because it sucks. It's not good. Basically, just, basically, Rico and Vega have a fight, and it's like, I'm running away from home. And that's the episode. Yeah. Uh... But then we get into the final arc of the show. With episode 22, Repossession. Uh, with K. Saying, basically, saying, give me the alien Empera and the dark Lugio capsules, or I'm going to murder your face. Or I'm going to murder Arya. Yeah, that's it. And I'm just like, eh, is she worth it? <laughs> I don't know if she's worth it. <laughs> she ain't worth it. Well, <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. They don't know that. No, I'm just saying, it's like a journal, she ain't worth it. Yeah, well, but it does in we the come to find out later that mm, kind of was. It does end up giving some really good scenes for all of the on, like, the human fighters. Yes. Because we end up getting to see, uh, you know, Rita fight K first, and then Laiha takes over, and then it turns, and then Xana takes over, then it's her and Xana fighting him, and I'm just like, this is what I came here. I didn't know I came here for this, but I did. <laughs> it's such a good episode for just fighting on the ground. Mm-hmm. Not as Ultraman, just them going against each other and just seeing Leia just straight up lay him out. Yep. Ha! It's great. <laughs> uh, episode 23, Kay challenges G to one last battle in Okinawa. So he leaves without telling anyone where he's going because he doesn't want to worry them. But Arya, as you said, she ends up getting saved by Zero in the last episode. Yep. Uh, then she goes and she and Moa are in the uh, van with the two capsules. Mm-hmm. And they end up crashing in after uh, Kay ends up firing down some lasers at them yep. using his monster. And they end up crashing and she ends up taking the capsules back to... Uh, the surprise, I was working for him the whole time. And then he kills her. Yeah. You've outlived your usefulness. Basically. But yeah. then we find out that in the next one, uh, Arya was actually... Was actually Belial. Yeah. In female form. And Kay's reaction to this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Because Ultraman is... Uh, Belial essentially kills him. Like, he removes all of his organs energy. that sustain him and yeah. energy so that he can reform himself. And Belial was happy. Yeah, and, and the way that Kay is so happy about this. The way that he ends up actually getting all this back, yep. like his you know, his organs and everything, yep. is when he broke into the Nebula House a few episodes ago, yep. there's a regeneration chamber in there. He's using that to bring all this back to him. Mm-hmm. Once again, continuity. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Kay's reaction to this is just so great because it's you know, Belial returns, he flies off. And he turns into Belial yeah. atro- atrocious. Atrocious. But I just love Kay's reaction of just like, Senpai has returned <laughs> and he noticed me! And then he falls off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Belial But he's atrocious. still alive. Yeah, he is. Belial I atrocious. love this form. His, I like it so much more than his base one. It's su- It looks just legitimately... It looks evil. Evil. It's it looks just, like... just dark and like gray colors and black and... The eyes, it's 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 like a like an evil shadow looking at you from the darkness. Yeah, that's it looks basically great. what it is. It's great. Mm-hmm. It's a really good one. Really good suits. Uh his claws, they shrink down, which I really liked. Yeah, because because he doesn't have like the comically big rubber arms and rubber hands anymore. Yeah. So yeah. they so they shrink those, which is nice. He doesn't he's not as like hunched over anymore. He's more yeah. like straight. He's not looks good. hunched back in Notre Dame. Hunchback of Notre Ultraman. <laughs> that was terrible. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> in, the ne- in the next episode, the AIB, you know, have it because once again, Belial is just, I have been reborn. I'm going to destroy you all. <laughs> Out of joy. Rejoice! 
And they don't. Well, you'll save so, it as your turn, then I'm going to murder your face. Yeah. So Blinds is going up to the moon. He's gathering power. Again. Once again. <laughs> and there's this whole plan where the AIB are just like going in abusing uh, the one from Jan's episode, that monster, because they're going to use Xena to go ahead and control that. They're going to try to bring that black hole back mm-hmm. uh, to send Belial wherever. Send him through that and hopefully destroy him once and for all. Yeah. And there's a whole plan with Zero, and they're supposed to uh, shoot him. The Nebula House is supposed to shoot him with a rocket to get rid of, like, the cells in him. Yep. But, but Belial's out there actually absorbing... There's like a, they have, like, a kind of gas... Yeah. ...that they're going to use on him to decay the uh, Trojan cells. Yeah. They're more or less... As I said, uh, Ultraman King, he's spread throughout the galaxy, but Belial's out there actually absorbing those. Yep. Which is interesting, because the way that... Um, and shows Gee's final form, Mega Master, uh, it uses those, you know, Ultraman King's lights yeah. and everything to power it. Mm-hmm. So I like the fact that once he has Mega Master and Belly are fighting later on in the episode, he actually gets beaten fairly quickly, but they give a legitimate reason for it. Mm-hmm. Take note, comrade. <laughs> Take note of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Like, he can't absorb as much, so he's not nearly as powerful. Then Father of Ultra comes down. Yeah. It creates a barrier around him and yeah. Belial. And I'm just like, yeah. It's it's so great. <laughs> Let, let's keep everyone else safe. Get them out. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to hold them off. And I love his, I love Father of Ultra's attitude when he shows up. Because I love when, he, when you first see him in the show. It's I think it's this episode or the one before it. But we... Like, Belio was returned, and, like, he and the mother of Ultra, we flash to their, you know, planet of light, and they're looking, like, they notice. Like, they feel a disturbance in the Force, and they know he's back. So Father of Ultra shows up, and I love his attitude when he shows up. He's yeah. like, get out of here, young kid, let me handle this. He throws the cape off. And then he basically says, like, giving them time to come up with a new plan, because mm-hmm. Zero's dead. Mm-hmm. Now, he got beaten by Belio pretty bad. Can we talk about one of the greatest scenes in the show, which is where... He, where Leto gets that one last day with his family yeah. before he has to go off to fight. It's... I, I teared up watching this scene. It's, he's like, I have to... Because they're, he's in Nebula House. He's like, I have to go home because tomorrow's a very special day. I'm like, okay, so it's either it's either a birthday or an anniversary. It's got to be one of those two. Turns out it's Mayu, his daughter. It's her birthday. They go to this really fancy restaurant and his wife is like, can we afford this? And he's like, ah, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. She gets a really nice cake, nice presents. They go out to a park. And then it's like, okay, daddy's got to go to work now. I got to go. And his wife stops him. And she pulls the uh, morpher out. Of, yeah, I forget what it's called. But she pulls the morpher out of his coat pocket. And she, she's known. She knows that he's zero. And she's like, I'll have dinner ready for you when you get back. And he says goodbye to Mayu. And when he's about to leave and his wife just grabs a hold of him behind, like, I lost it. It's a, so, so good. Everybody can act. Everybody <laughs> in this show can act. It's, that, that, it's such plus. a rarity. It's a plus. There, Everyone in this show can act. There was also, uh, uh, it was an earlier episode that I completely forgot to mention this in my bad. Uh, it was the episode where we get to see Riku's backstory about how he was put in front of the uh, observatory. Yeah. And he meets the guy who named him. Yeah. Which is yeah, they're, they're, they're playing great. on the PS4. I can't remember what they were oh, playing Tekken Seven. They were playing. They were playing Tekken Seven. They, and I love. Like, can we can we also talk about one of Black has greatest moments where uh, she's talking to Rem and it's like they went to go get a vacuum cleaner. They'll be back later. Last time you sent him to buy a bike for shopping, he returned with a bike without a basket. He's probably gonna come back with a game console. And Lyle's like, you're probably right. And then they flash hard him. cut to Riku. <laughs> Holding the PS4, and she, and then just the sword comes at him, and she's like, "Take it back and buy the back and buy the and back." He's like, uh, "You know, you're right." <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. There's some really good just moments like yes, that. but yeah, I like the fact that we end up getting to see Riku meet with the guy who actually named him. That was a great, great uh, episode. Belial t- uh, told Kadak to bring him down mm-hmm. to Earth, and hopefully. Destroy for him later. Of course, it didn't happen. And uh, we we find out that he's literally like it's it's kind of, this his Riku's creation kind of reminded me of JoJo Part Five. Yeah, he's literally like a gay love child of Belio and like another male's energy created this thing. So yeah, exactly another another literal gay love child. In the last episode, 
Um, they do an in that portal, and G basically also up sacrificing himself mm-hmm. by having to take Belial into that portal. Yeah. And there's a scene where they're like inside each other's head. Yeah. Because their energies meld, of course, because Belial even created him mm-hmm. out of his energy. And I love it. Seeing the two. I want to bring up a little technical thing first. Seeing the two of them, Belial and then Riku, standing next to each other. Is Riku that tall, or is the, or did they get another suit right. actor for Belial to make him that short? I think, I, it's, I think it's just because we're so used to seeing. It's not really so much that Riku's that tall; it's the fact that Belial's always hunched over. He is always <laughs> hunched over, but at the same time, they're like the same height. Yeah, and it's like, um, how big is he? Nor but I love yeah, seeing even. that that insight. But that was a great scene, and how it ends with him just like hugging him. And my dad, I'm gonna hug you. I, you know, there, there's still some good in you. And then we see Belial's, like, his true form, you know, because the evil that was possessing him escapes, the monster that's been, like... Well, it's not so much that, it's just that he's been so hungry for power for so long because yeah. he felt like he just not worth it. Yeah. So it ends up coming from a place of just dark depression. Exactly. <laughs> and just, you know, that feeling of worthlessness, and that's how the alien ray blood from uh, the other Zero movie that we yeah. watched... Great movie, by the way. Mega Monster Battle. Mega Monster Battle is our one of my favorite Toku movies. One of the best Toku movies ever made. Up there with 199. So <laughs> it's just like I might actually put it over that. I'm gonna put them one about even, but I enjoy this one so much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I love the fact that it's just like we got the alien ray blood out of him, more or less, mm-hmm. and destroyed him there. So maybe Belly was gone. They won't because Ultraman has a problem with letting things go. But. <sighs> This last we'll episode, get to that in the future video. Then the black hole starts collapsing, and they're so worried about him being stuck in there, and he just comes. I was back. getting Avengers flashbacks. Yeah, of Iron Man getting uh, having to get out of the portal in the sky. Yeah, but he ends up going over there, and then uh, he ends up he is going through it the last second, mm-hmm. and every and it's it came full circle because the people were so happy to see him back. Oh yeah, because you know all the things that he's I was done, happy to see him back too. Yeah, all the things that he's done for them throughout the season, just like. You might be Belial's son, but you're not him. And that was sort Sin, of the basis Sins of, of the Father is another big thing yeah. in the show. Yeah, Sins of the Father is just like, should not have any reflection of the son. And I loved it. Then The end of this show is, it's good. I like it. I like G a lot. Uh, let's talk about... very, very good. Let's talk about these characters. Kids and the characters. Uh, Rico. I like him a lot. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to like him. Uh, he Youngest was, Ultraman ever, I believe. Yeah, and... He was he, only 16, I think, when they cast him. And then his 17th birthday actually happens during the show, so they actually bring that into the show. Mm. Um, and he was the young Captain Marvelous in the flashbacks. That's right. Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. And he was also in, he was also in that terrible, uh, Revenge of Belial movie. Oh as my a god. a different character. He was. He was in that. And movie. he was not a good character in that movie. He was bad. But in this, he's a lot better. But in this, he, his actor is very good. So. Yeah. I like his personality. He was very upbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, of course, he's going to have some moments once he actually finds out who his dad is and as they have a serious moment. And, uh, you know, these people don't trust me. And I got it. Mm. It's good to see things like that. It's good to have a character who can actually portray that fairly well. Uh, like, best girl. Best girl. Best girl. As you like She's my favorite female protagonist in, like, all of Ultra. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like up there with her and okay. Jaffe's character from Nexus. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it's just like seeing her, we get to see so much of her, her struggle, and her fighting. Her final fight with Kay. Oh, my God. They're fighting in that restaurant that's like under construction where she, where she gets her sword knocked away and she's just like blocking and like. When she, that scene where she deals like 50 body blows yeah. it's more like 5 but, it's, and then, but it feels like 50 because you really feel the she impact she takes of the, the barrier from like the cones and just fighting him with a rod I'm just like you are bad she's <laughs> great at using her envi- you get to see how great she is at using her environment because yeah. he knocks her back and she just grabs it and just starts beating the hell out of him with it it's awesome. and at the end she doesn't kill him he just ends up like uh, he's like, Belial, do you under do you see me do now? Do you understand? And she's like, Yeah. Yeah, he does. And then he disappears in life, but I'm sitting here like, you still show that one, you were the biggest badass in this show. Mm. So Belial ain't got shit on you. So, <laughs> so here we are with just amazingness in a character. 
I loved her in this show. And I knew I was going to love her because I recognized her from the Dr. Pac-Man movie. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you were already great in that. How are you going to bring that to this? And then she does. It's sort of like the opposite of uh, what the reporter lady from Build does. And Mm -hmm. because she was also in uh, Ginga Ass. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was much more of a badass than that. But it's just like, she's been a badass in everything I've seen. Leia's actress, that is. Yeah. That's the great thing. Um, now, here's a case me the only one. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, Rita. Okay. I like him a lot. He's fun. I I love... Again, when, his intro where he just he slips on the banana. I love whenever he ends up getting uh, just abducted by AIB. He's like about to go into a meeting. He's like, always about... This, this <laughs> poor son of a bitch. It's amazing he hasn't gotten fired. I know, but it's so hilarious. He was legitimately about to like go into a meeting. He was walking through the automatic doors. He's about to get and, there and they're like, Department of Health. I know, come Boa on. And he's just like, he's like, ah, 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 no. <laughs> just carrying him out. And they're like, we need Ultraman Zero. And the Zero's like, what's happening? <laughs> he's like, please, please, I have to go... What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's a fun character. He's I love a very fun him. character. He, I love seeing him interact with his family. It's great. Him, him interacting with his family. They have all, the three actors, the three of them. They have really good chemistry. Yeah. They're very, very good in this show. Let's talk about K. He's really the only one I want to talk about. Juggles. Oh. <laughs> you see, you know, I was thinking. I thought you, I thought it was going to be Juggles. I was yeah. Like that's the only one I really think it could be. Like he reminds me a lot of him. And that's not a bad thing. No, it's just no, like, no, because Juggles was was the best, the greatest thing about Orb. He was the only good thing about Orb. But it's just like, yeah. <laughs> but he had a you know sort of a different because Juggles was doing this a lot for himself. Yeah. And in Kay's case, he was legitimately doing this all for Belial. I mean, yeah. Belial. He it remi- Belial it reminded me of Doctor Kemp. Yeah. Doctor Kemp from Live Man. I've got to be the best for for Belial Sama, so so that, so that he will uh, acknowledge me. me. That Senpai will notice me. And then that happens at the end, more or less. Yeah, it does. That's and pretty much what he proclaims when Belia returns. His senpai returned, then he noticed me. And you're and all screwed. And he, he's a good character. He's a very good character. I think I'm going to say I liked him better than Juggles. I'm not going to say that. Okay. If only because of the fact that Juggles was legitimately manipulating everyone. He was manipulating everyone. I think K is better because he stands out so well in a show that is so good. Yeah. While Juggles was the best, I thought he was the best thing about Orb. Orb and Orb Origins. And Orb Origins. But the rest of the, but like, he do- he doesn't elevate the show but so much. Yeah. While he just, while I think K just made a better show that yeah. much. That much good. Uh, that's really it. Guy is a good show. It is a very good show. I liked it so much better than Orb. And there is one oh, major yeah. reason that I liked it better than Orb. And what's that? There was no SSP. Oh, good God. <laughs> The I, I remember thinking because oh, Ultraman Orb was a show that left me very lukewarm. The, there's a couple of things in it that are that I like. Juggles being one of them. There's some good action, some some good stuff in it. Yeah, but there are so many unintentionally funny moments in Orb, and it's a lot of stuff that I think was supposed to be funny just was was like. painfully awkward. Yeah, you had a the the, the, the compare. I mean, I don't. Comparison's all well and good, I guess, but I, I try not to do it as much. But comparing like someone like Laiha to someone like the lead, the female lead from Orb, where she's just constantly screaming or having to get or saved. having to get saved, she's just always the damsel in distress. She's so annoying, and then you compare it to somebody like Laiha, who's just a much stronger female character. Yes, it's just like one, just a strong character in general. Yeah, she's just a strong character because that's one of the things that Orb really lacked was strong characters. Yeah, it's like you had the SSP, but they you either liked them or you didn't. And a lot of you know, didn't like them because they were sort of annoying. It, it was bad anime. Yeah. It was just bad anime is what they were. But then we ended up getting something like this where the cast is much more contained. Yeah, we had the AIB as sort of like the military yeah. force in this one. And we always ended up having something with Zena and Moa mm-hmm. sort of going on in the background. Yeah. And that's great. It takes a while for them to introduce them, though. Like, they're there in the first episode, but to actually introduce them fully yeah. takes a couple episodes, which... I liked. Which was fine because it gave us, you know, more time. Because then you get more time with 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 G, with Riku and Laiha and, and Zero. And Zero and Pega, you get to know these people more. Yeah. So it's good. Like military forces in Ultraman are sort of the thing. Mm-hmm. Which it's always good to have them. 
But it's like they took such a backseat in Orb, and in this one, they took a backseat. Because the only one you ever actually saw in Orb was uh, the lead girl's uncle, yeah. who was just a dope. Yeah. A complete dope of a character. And uh, I, I still think my favorite ones are going to be... I would... Uh, uh, like in terms of Ultra? In terms of, in terms of Ultra, I think my favorite um, like military ones are still... Like, X is probably still number one. Guys. X was good. Guys from Mebius was fantastic. And um, the one from Tegan was good. Yeah. I think, like, in terms of Ultra, just from the ones that we've seen, I haven't started RB yet, because copy. But I think, just in terms of just, like, Ultra ranking, I'm going to do it like this. It's going to be Nexus, Mebius, Tiga, X, and and Gide. I'm putting okay. Gide and X on the same okay. for me. Yeah. For me, it's going to be... And then Mebius, of course, is still at the top because that's still probably my favorite Toku show ever. It's going to be Mebius, then it's going to be X, then it's going to be Nexus, Sheed, and then Nexus. Oh, okay, I think the show is better than Nexus. So Tiga's under the Tiga is under under that. Okay, acceptable. But yeah, <laughs> tell us what you think. <laughs> tell us what you think about G in the comments below. Please do. As you see, we really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next time, join us next time. For oh. Garo season three. Ah, well, okay. I hope you're ready because the he's, pain. He is. <laughs> but yeah, it, it'll be a it'll, it'll it'll be an experience. Don't don't forget to like us. And after face. Garo season three, decade. I'm excited. But yeah, let us know. Uh, you know, go to our Facebook, become Support a patron. Us on Patreon if you can. Uh, Twitter. Yeah. Once again, this has been the Token Cast. Signing off, we'll join you again in two weeks for episode 60 Girl Season Sadness. Bye, everybody. Bye.